Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Minnesota Rack Stars podcast. And we are on our way out to South Dakota again. This time we are heading out turkey hunting. Um, <laughs> you got to be careful at the start of the podcast here. Uh, there's a little road rage that was uh, recorded accidentally. And uh, yeah, we got a little hot in the car. So just uh, prepare yourself for for an uh, interesting start of the podcast, but uh, it's all in good fun, I hope. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, we're, we're in the truck. We're heading out to South Dakota, and we are talking turkey hunting. So if you're in the turkey hunting mode right now, uh, this will be a good podcast because we've got a lot of turkey talk. So I'm going to cut to the chase here, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the podcast. There's nobody coming. No, it's just like, turn. <laughs> Every. Now that I drive semi, it's like, get the hell out of my way. Go in the other lane. Go in the other lane. For frick's sake. No one's there. Turn. You know, (laughs) as I'm downshifting, you know, it's just like, get the hell. You you know there's a semi behind you. Get the hell out of the way. Blast them on the air horn. Well, that's our first minute of the podcast. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. (laughs) Cheerful ride. (laughs) As you can tell, we're in the vehicle right now, and uh, we are recording a podcast. (laughs) <laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode. <laughs> we're, we're happy to be with you. It's uh, I got the uncles with me again. We're doing our annual trip out to South Dakota turkey hunting, and uh, yeah, we just went through a a green light and some frustration coming from the front seats right now. And it's it's kind of <laughs> been one of those trips so far. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome everyone. <laughs> we're uh, we're heading out to South Dakota right now. Uh, to do a little turkey hunting, and uh, yeah, it's so far, we just uh, got done stopping, grabbed a bite to eat, and uh, just got some subs, and loaded back up in the truck, and on the way, uh, we're heading through southern Minnesota right now, heading west, um, gained that extra hour, so that's nice, instead of coming home, you lose that hour, and like, man, where'd time go, but yeah, we're we're on the road, and Last time we recorded, I think we were in your truck, weren't we, Dale? Yes. Dale's yep. uh, driving his nice new Chevy, and this time around we're we're driving my truck, and Dale's driving, and Jerome's in the passenger seat, and I'm in the back, but I just bought a, a Ford a couple weeks ago and got it loaded up and on the road again. How's it driving so far, Dale? Not too bad. <laughs> I don't have a rash yet, so that's good. <laughs> hey, you know you got cool seats or hot seat up there, so if it gets a little warm, just just hit the the cool oh, there seat. There you go. But nice ride, really nice. It's ride. a very nice ride. Yeah, nice nice Ford. I, I never was a Ford guy, um, until I kind of started riding with some people that that I know, one of my coworkers and uncle and buddy of mine started riding around in Fords and realizing how much room there is in in these trucks. Uh, it's pretty slick, especially when I got kids. I got two kids, so I got a car seat and a booster seat and getting in and out. Uh, always a little bit of a, a pain with the smaller back seat, but now I got a little back, bigger back seat. This one here has a, a few less miles than, than my Chevy I was driving. I think I ended up uh, turning the keys off here. It's parked right now. I'll still use it for some work stuff, but I think there's 305,000 miles on there. So I, I, I think I got my money's worth out of that guy. But yeah, so so we're riding uh, riding in the Ford, and we got it loaded up. Uh, it took a little bit uh, for us to <laughs> to get everything packed in here, and um, yeah, I'm I'm riding next to a bunch of suitcases and um, wires and mixers and computers and <laughs> deer de or not deer turkey <laughs> decoys. Deer decoys, yeah, yep. turkey oh, decoys. Man. But yeah, so we're going out here for a little turkey slash coyote hunt. That's what we're doing. That's that's kind of the the name of the game this weekend, and uh, we I don't know. We, we we our goal is obviously to get a turkey, but there's so many coyotes out here. Most of us brought a 223 with. Yep, we're ready to go. So we won't mention who did not. <laughs> some of us forgot theirs, but I don't know. It, it is what it is. I was packing last night. Um, some of you guys know I, I mow lawns in the summer. I teach for my real job, if you will. And then uh, in the summer when I'm not teaching, I, I mow lawns. And it's starting to warm up. We're getting some warm temperatures. It's going to be 80 
guys out here in South Dakota. It's going to be 80. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a heat wave. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I got my lawnmowers ready to go when I get home. Because we're going to get home late Sunday, more than likely. And uh, Monday I'll be hooking up the lawnmower. So I was trying to get my lawnmower situated here last night and helping put the girls to bed. And by the time I ended up finishing packing, it was about 11.30 at night. And, uh, yeah, I ended up forgetting the, the 223. But Jerome and Dale have their 223s, so we'll we'll team up, buddy up, and hopefully shoot some coyotes. I don't know. We might have a better chance of getting some shots off at some coyotes than turkeys. You know, last year when we went out here for turkey hunting, um, put on a lot of miles, and we did not see any turkeys that we could even hunt on properties we had access to so but uh so we're hopeful that this year we'll have a little bit more chance and so yeah and we've been good. we've been getting some videos from the landowner and a couple other people of, of showing uh showing us some videos of turkeys running around and that's a good sign and i think yep. a big reason for that is probably you know the lack of snow cover that the turkeys were able to um you know, kind of, kind of stay in their fall home range, if you will. I don't know. I mean, to me, that's what it seems like because I know last year, and even when we were talking to the landowner, like we weren't, they weren't seeing many turkeys out there this time last year. But you know, the snow just melted not too long before we got out there, so I think that probably has something, something to do with it. Would you think? I would think so. And um, you know, the, I'm assuming that they're going to start getting active, just like the ones at home. You can definitely tell the oh, turkey man. activity is really coming up, and hopefully that'll be kind of the same out here. So, But these are Merriman's, so I really don't know exactly if there's a big difference between the eastern, which is what we have back home, and the Merriman's that are we get, where we're going to be hunting now. So, so Jerome, how many, I mean, I, know, I, I think you've hunted turkey before me. You've been hunting turkey for a while, haven't yep. you? Yep. I've shot five turkeys so far. Okay, yeah. I, th- I I was real hot right away when I first started. I've I've only shot a turkey with a, a bow. I've never shot one with a gun, and and this weekend here uh, will be the first time I've used a, a shotgun turkey hunting since I, there was another uh, year I, I went out to South Dakota with my brother-in-law. Uh, we went to the Black Hills out there turkey hunting. That was I think it was the only other time I've used a shotgun turkey hunting so this will be this will be different again it's just it, it's such a different ball game going from the bow to the gun and we're out here for a limited amount of time so it's say like, you know what yep we're going to apply for the, the shotgun if we don't get the shotgun then yeah we'll go for bow but we were lucky enough to to get uh, drawn for the shotgun tag but Jerome you gotta I know I know when it comes to deer hunting I always ask you know a hunting story you know your favorite hunting story or something you remember what about turkey hunting let's let's hear a good turkey hunting story that you have my most memorable turkey hunt is actually one that i didn't actually have a chance to shoot but i uh, called one in about a half mile away when i was hunting at a friend's piece of property north of uh, sock rapids and um i called it in and i could hear from a distance kept going and I was on the edge of an open field, and behind me was a bunch of brush and whatever, and the turkey couldn't come out. And I was sitting there, and I had him pacing back and forth behind me for like 45 minutes as the the evening was going on, and it was getting darker and darker, and finally, eventually, that turkey left. But that was so much fun, and I never even actually saw the thing because it never was able to come out, but it was in the thicket right behind me, and I could hear it walking and I was in a ground blind but that was actually uh one of the more memorable ones that I had even though I never harvested it just the fact that for 45 minutes I had that thing interested and that was fun but um probably uh another one that I had I had one to come all the way across the field and it kept coming kept coming and um I thought I was going to lose it because a stupid farm cat came out and right in front of me by my decoys and uh, a couple of pheasants out there. Um, and it came out right by my decoys and I could, that Tom was coming and then it, it stopped. And I thought, ah, oh, doggone it. You know, and so, you know, of all the times for a stupid farm cat to come out, but <laughs> I suppose it heard me calling, you know, with my call. And uh, so I was checking it out, but finally it left. 
and then the tom came in and then i was able to harvest it so that was that was uh, a fun hunt and so um you know every every turkey hunts fun and uh i do enjoy it and it's a challenge to get them to come in and it can be a very fun hunt but yet a very frustrating hunt at the same time when it doesn't work out so that's that's the joy of turkey hunting for me plus it gives me a chance to hunt something in the spring you know uh this year uh we actually came out to near watertown to do, try to do some snow goose hunting and with the uh lack of snow and the snow cover and the snow line not being there uh it ended up kind of being a bust we only harvested like six or seven snow geese on a weekend but um so that's the first time i've tried that in the spring but normally turkey is my first thing to hunt and uh that's why i always look forward to it because it's always it's another reason to get out get the camo out and uh, get out in the field you know the one i mean I, I like a lot of a lot of things about turkey hunting don't get me wrong and kind of hit on those as we go here but the one thing i i enjoy about turkey hunting for the most part is you get there in the blind and and sometimes you know it's it's chilly yet but when that sun comes up and starts to warm up that blind it's mm-hmm. so nice in there <laughs> but you could sit in there and and uh you know just kind of soak in that heat you know after the long winter it uh it's it's a nice feeling to to have that that sun hitting you and and warming up and then the other thing too is you don't have to be so cautious about your scent. Nope. I mean, yeah. you guys remember when it came out here last time, I mean, I'd take a shower when I'd get up in the morning and, you know, get get the clothes out of the Ozonics and, you know, get, get cleaned up. I mean, I'd get dressed outside and and then get back and take those clothes off outside and get changed. And before we go out hunting later on, taking a shower again, going back out. And this here, you wear the clothes in the house and, who gives a rip and yep. <laughs> go out there not so it's a lot less uh work in the end as far as a, a scent control standpoint how about how about you dale i mean I mean, you haven't been hunting turkeys for too long have you this is only my second year uh last year's trip out to south dakota was, was my first time um and you know we didn't have any luck we're looking at or watching any so uh when I when we got back, I did get a license from Minnesota and went out, but with work, work schedule and such, I only got out a couple of days, so that wasn't really a lot. So, still looking for the first bird, still looking for the first time. Did did you run into it. any turkeys last year at all? Not during hunting season okay. for a turkey. I I run into them a lot during the deer hunting season. Sure. Uh, in fact, there was twenty or thirty of them right from my stand for deer hunting. They look like a one of those old. Uh, arcades at the fair where the ducks come across the top that's they came out of the woods just like that so did you have any like vocal encounters with any of them i mean did you hear any call get the call to any or anything like that uh not during hunting season i don't think i can't remember um i know when i was out deer hunting they were roosting in the trees by the one food plot so i did get to experience that a little bit and hear that noise and the ruckus that they that they make so you can kind of tell where they're they're bedding and such but i uh i will assure you that it is a whole different ball game when you're actually hunting them versus you're hunting deer and you hear them or whatever yeah. um i'll never forget the first time i i heard a tom respond to our calling the first time i ever went out um i was helping coach softball and I think we lost the night before, and I was frustrated. I was mad, and I, I already had my license bought, and I, and I called up my brother-in-law, and I said, hey, we're going hunting tomorrow. I feel like killing something. You know, I was frustrated. I need to take my frustration out on something. And I said I bought these new uh, decapitating broadheads that I remember the story. I, <laughs> I feel that I truly need to try out tomorrow morning. I mean, that's 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 the mindset I was in. You know, it was, it was game time, and and it was time for me to take a step in a direction that I've never been to before. And and that was turkey hunting, and and my goal was to decapitate a turkey. So little that I knew about you know turkey hunting. Uh, I called up 
my brother-in-law said, let's roll. You know, teach me the ropes. And he's turkey hunted quite a bit. And he's telling me all these stories about, you know, these turkeys that he's encountered before and his dad's encountered. And and one of the stories is, I, I think if I remember correctly, is it was either him or his dad were, were turkey hunting. And they were sitting there in the blind and all of a sudden they heard this right next to the blind. And also they looked and hear this silent Tom come like sneaking right up to them next to their blind and just the excitement that it brought them just sneaking up on them and all of a sudden boom on like now what do I do but he's getting me all hyped up with these stories and we're sitting there calling we hear one off in the distance and I don't know if it was him or I calling it had to have been him because the turkeys probably weren't responding to me when I was calling at that time but anyways he calls and it was just dead calm sun coming up the sun was behind us and out in front of us I hear this turkey just erupt in the woods and it just echoed throughout the woods and uh my heart just started pounding i'm like holy lord like it's 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 totally different when you start hunting them i know grandma and grandpa right jerome they used to have turkeys on the farm yep uh and and they look like wild turkeys but they were tame yeah and and those things gobbled all the time i was like shut up you know what whatever but when you're out there hunting them and, and and strategizing and all this stuff and you hear one it's like it's on and and that thing comes strutting in the sun all the way across the field and just slowly took its time and uh, i'm with my bow and it comes in and it it starts to circle the decoy there's another pheasant good pheasant population out here um so anyways it starts to come over by the decoy and i pull back and i'm aiming right for its head and I let go, and that arrow was like a curveball. It just took off, and it went in a different direction that I was even aiming. And I have a video on YouTube of it, and it just, I put it in slow motion, and the thing just goes like a curveball. I'm like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> and I'm like, all right, strike one, let's go. Here we go. I got to knock another arrow. And that bird just kept circling uh, that decoy, and I pull back. And I jumped the gun, I pulled the trigger, and shot right in front of it. And it kind of jumps up in the air and flutters its feathers a little bit, and it goes back into full strut. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And I'm down to my last arrow. I only had three arrows with me. Pull back, and I shoot. And like I said, I was new to the game. I should have did more research. This is on me 100%. But I shot, and I shot a little bit too far to the right, I think it was. And uh, we weren't able to recover that turkey, but... Man, what an encounter. It's just, it's a totally different experience. It doesn't matter what type of game you're going after or fish you're trying to fish, whatever. It's a whole different ball game when you say, all right, it's time to play, and, and you start to get those encounters. But uh, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to hopefully running some birds out here, but also, Dale, you got a hot spot right now back at home. Yeah, the camera's been pretty good. So uh, I'm excited to get back and you know after this weekend and get some – Minnesota tag and see what can happen this year with it. There's probably been every morning, if not every other day, uh, probably 20, 20 birds out there, um, probably five uh, toms uh, strutting their stuff uh, every morning. Well, every morning when the, the cell camera goes and brings them to me. Definitely, definitely a roosting spot. Um, I know my brother hunted out there. I was telling you about five years ago and he went out there one morning, and he said as he was walking out, birds were flying everywhere. They're, he was busting them out of the roost. Didn't know they roosted right there, but I, th- I think we know for a fact right now, especially where the times uh, time stamps are on those trail yeah. camera photos, it's right away in the morning, then late at night, ready for sundown. There, they're back in there again. But yeah, I'm, when I was out bow hunting last year, then they were they were roosting in the trees. I could see them there. So yeah, they they've been really active, like you. You mentioned there earlier, Jerome, on my drive to school today, I bet I saw probably, I don't know, 10 toms, probably 20 hens, and just, you know, that that sun's finally been peeking through, so those those birds are out in those open fields just strutting their stuff out there. Okay. And it's it's just a magical time of year, it really is, and... um, and it seems like the spring was earlier, even though we just had snow. 
and it seems like everything is ready to rock and roll and it's just uh it's neat to see them they really are getting a lot more active i don't mean to be laughing because i mean knock on wood this doesn't happen to us but uh, my wife was telling me a story about i don't know who it was co-workers family or something or a friend of a co-worker i don't know what it was <sighs> They went to drive down to go see the eclipse, and I don't know how far they made it, but a turkey flew out and shattered their windshield, and they weren't able to make it to their destination to go see the eclipse. It happens. <laughs> like, oh, man. But, yeah, be, be, be cautious out there driving because those birds are, are definitely out there everywhere. Exactly. Um yeah. You know, and I'm hoping we'll see some. You know, again, last year was kind of a bust. Uh, it was still a good trip. We threw up a deer stand, and, you know, we did some scouting and checked out the lands and stuff like that. But uh, hopefully there will be some birds around that. At least we have a chance. And uh, tomorrow will be our scouting day, and uh, hopefully it'll, we'll see some birds. Yeah, so let's, let's talk about, you know, our objective. I mean, obviously tonight, you know, we're going we're gonna to reach camp at, Probably roughly around midnight or so. Watch out for those ducks, Dale. I see that. <laughs> a couple of mallards. Um, tonight we'll probably get in somewhere around midnight. We'll unpack some things. But uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking of getting up early in the morning. Jerome, you're on coffee duty. Yep. You get the coffee rolling. Yep. We um, have plenty of coffee. We bought another container last fall. so Nice. We're good to go. And I got my thermos with. So... So we'll, we'll we'll get the coffee brewing bright and early, and kind of kind of get you know get our clothes on our, our camo on. We'll go up and uh, kind of glass from some high spots and and uh, see if we can spot some turkeys. And if if not, we usually pretty have a pretty good chance of of spotting some coyotes. So I think yeah. tomorrow, obviously, I mean we're going to be out there with two twenty threes locked and loaded, ready to go. Hopefully we can spot some turkeys. Um, you know what? We we might not even need to leave the shack to spot the turkeys. Because they were roosting right behind us. <laughs> That's so true. That was, <laughs> and they were in the yard. And, uh, of course, in the fall, the turkey season's not open during the deer season when we were there. But, uh, yeah, they, you know, I think some of them young ones, we could have walked right up to them and petted them. They were that close to us. So, but... Uh, hopefully, hopefully a few of them will still be around with a tom or two. Yeah, they they really like roosting right right next to the to the house and the bunkhouse. So <laughs> we'll we'll see where they are in the morning. But you know, obviously, you're gonna get out and kind of see the landscape. It's always fun watching the sun come up out here too, and and uh, see what's moving around. So tomorrow tomorrow morning, obviously, is gonna be a, a scout day for us. Um, kind of see where where things are at. And then uh, we come out here for another reason, too, and that's kind of get ready for the fall. Absolutely. You know, and, and hopefully we'll see, see some deer, too, see some activity with the deer, which is always kind of fun. And, um, yeah, we got a couple of stands that we're going to put up again in, in a couple of different spots and looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, you know, you listen to the big – podcasters and other people and a lot of times they say go out west turkey hunting it's some of your best deer scouting can be while you're also hunting turkeys look for sheds look for deer activity look for signs of deer bedding and all that type of thing and they said that if, and you know and i think they were targeting more if you hunt like public lands but turkey hunting can be a really valuable way to scout for deer in the fall yeah, you see those kind of those those travel routes they like going, and yep. you know also you start walking, maybe find some trails that you haven't seen before, and um, rubs or like you said, even sheds. You know, yep. all of a sudden you find a nice shed. Well, <laughs> we know there's a good buck around, and obviously last year, I mean last year, I had a lot of success seeing big deer, and and why was that? Because we went out here turkey hunting last year. And we went for a little walk, and we kicked up a bunch of deer in a particular area. Then mm -hmm. immediately it was like, well, we need to get a stand in here. And uh, first time it went out, um, it's crazy because it was mid-October, and I go out at about, what was it 3 o'clock, I think it was. So I had like 
I think it was earlier than that. Yeah, even. I think it I was 2 two thirty. Yeah, two two thirty somewhere in there. Anyways, I mean, it was like seventy five degrees plus, and I'm going out there and sweating, and all of a sudden I look and there's a a giant ten pointer already out in the spot that I wanted to go. So saw him, and then later on uh, went back out in November and I went in that spot, and I went a little deeper in and. All of a sudden, boom, run into a, a nice, big, mature A-pointer. Um, but we wouldn't have known that if we wouldn't have went out there turkey hunting. Right. So, like you said, drone was very valuable in many different ways to, to get out there and do some deer scouting while uh, while you're out there turkey hunting. I did bring a, a, a trail camera with, a tact cam with, that I uh, have a solar panel. And I'm going to try to get that going out here, but Dale, like you said, the, the biggest... Issue is going to be finding that cell service, cell coverage, yep. Um, Especially down with the river beds in the in the creeks area. Yeah, and I run through Verizon, and Verizon isn't as good out here as AT and T. And I had it set up. I wasn't even thinking. I had it set up through Verizon. Um, not sure if you can have it set up through AT and T if you have a, a Verizon phone. I don't know how that works, but we'll see. We'll we'll either just have to find a spot and hang it up and go for it, or Maybe just hang it up and don't even do the sale plan. Just cut it loose, and when we come back out here in October or whatever, just bring a little card reader with and push play on it and hopefully be surprised with with a good deer. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, last year did we – yeah, I found a shed out here turkey hunting last year too right behind the house. Remember that? We were on the side-by-side, and all of a sudden right next to the house, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, right there, there's yep. a shed. Yep. <laughs> what? Yeah, so we're – so we're, we're kind of going to be getting after it tomorrow. It's going to be 80 degrees. We're going to be finding spots to put up stand. You know, that spot that I was just talking about where I saw those deer, I originally wanted to be in the center of this location, and there just wasn't a straight tree to, to put a stand, uh, a portable stand. So we, we ended up buying a uh, couple ladder stands. Either one way or another, Jerome, I think we're going to get a stand up in that area because uh, – there is a telephone pole in there. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to mention the telephone pole, or the power pole, power I should pole, say. Yeah, yeah a power pole. Uh, I don't know. It, it might be weird, but you know what? That could be a, a hallmark spot right there. <laughs> you know? It is. Uh, I I particularly like hunting from ladder stands. I, I've never been a fan of the hanging stand, and so uh, to me it just gives a lot more stable base to shoot from and stuff, especially as you get older, you appreciate that. But uh, you had put me on to a couple of them that uh, the seat actually lifts up, so you have a broader area to shoot. Even though it's a, a single stand, the seat flips up, so you actually have a nice platform to shoot from. Yeah, it's it's nice. And then not only that, I mean, yeah, you you want to take a breather and stand up and stretch the legs a little bit. You can lean up against that tree, and, and uh, you feel comfortable in it. Yeah. You don't feel like you're going to fall out if you take the wrong step. You know, you got side rails on, and... And uh, the seat lifts up, so you got now you got a bigger platform, and the platform goes all the way back to the tree. So it's yep. it's a pretty comfortable stand. Um, I like them a lot. So tomorrow during the day, getting after it, going to be sweating. Brought, brought the boot dryer with because uh, the feet will be a little sweaty. And then uh, hopefully we can maybe put some birds to bed, just figure out where they're going to be at, and kind of go from there <coughs> after that. I don't know. Maybe maybe sneak into town for a little bit. You got to make a sneak into town either, either tomorrow night or Saturday night. We'll have to make a trip into town and see what the locals know. <laughs> good good thing. Good way to scout. Talk to the locals. Well, so. we did that last year. With no, none of the locals saw anything either. So yeah. yeah, and we we went there to kind of talk. You know, I mean, obviously we went there to eat and just whatever. Get out of the the bunkhouse there, and actually we went to a fundraiser first, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. That was for hunting. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, people's property that we hunt on, they had a fundraiser at their church and we went, uh, to the fundraiser and tried, tried talking Dale into buying a a dozen cookies for $200, but he wouldn't (laughs) bite. And, uh, so we went into town and (laughs) it's funny people. Um, you know, we, we got, we have good private property to hunt and, uh, it's it's funny watching all the out of towners show up, and 
you see them flock over to all the people who look like locals, and you know exactly why they're going over there. Mm-hmm. Buy them a drink, <laughs> starting a conversation. It's it's like back at home, guys going up to the ladies out here. It's the guys going up to the guys and see how much property they have yep. and if there's any deer on it. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a lot of friendly gentlemen out here um, that uh, you know try to find their way. But hey, you gotta. You, you got to try somehow, right? I mean, everybody's got to start somewhere. And how we got permission out here was was at a wedding reception, right? And and all of a sudden, Jerome and Dale started talking to a couple of the friends of the of Dale's daughter, and found out that uh, they got some property out here, and they invited you guys to go out here. And yep. next thing you know, they said it was cool for me to come out here with you guys, and, and that's how we got here. Yeah. So that's, I don't know, it, it seems like it's yesterday that we kind of started doing this, but it's it's yeah, wild it's how wild. fast time yeah. flies. Yeah, so hopefully, I mean, I'm glad the weather's cooperating. We could be getting a blizzard, and we're not. It's going to be nice and warm, and, uh, you know, we should have some, get some of our objectives done that we want, and hopefully even come back with a turkey. We'll see. Yeah, and I'm, like I kind of mentioned in our podcast, we, we did, uh, I think it was coming back from South Dakota this past fall, that nice new line of apparel that Arctic Shield has, that real light gear. Guess what? I'll be wearing that again tomorrow and, and Saturday. But, yeah. You know, you still had to bring a lot of clothing because... Mornings would be cool. Mornings are cool, and it's always windy, and it's going to be cold. So you had to, you had to bring the, the warmer stuff, but by afternoon, it's going to be pretty warm, and so then... You know, especially for hunting, you're going to have to have different kind of hunting clothes all day. And um, that's why the pickup is totally packed in the back. And thank you, Joe, for doing such a good job. Kind of jenging, jenga-ing everything together. (laughs) Tetris, Jenga. Yeah. So It'll be Jenga when we take it out, Tetris when we put it in. Yeah, okay. (laughs) So, um, you know, today's the first day I've seen Joe's pickup here. And uh, (laughs) Joe, what was the first thing I said to you? Oh, I was like excited right and i get yep. this nice truck lots of room be a nice comfortable trip out there and pull up and i was expecting jerome to say hey nice truck joe but the first thing he says is why the hell don't you have a topper for this thing <laughs> 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 and trust me when i say this as soon as i bought this truck i've been online trying to find a <laughs> topper because i know how nice it is when we take these trips out here to have a topper and uh just so much more room well i mean I'm riding in the back here with five backpacks, two decoys, you know, where if you got that uh, that topper, all this stuff is going in the back, and, you know, I'm laying on the beach back here. <laughs> <laughs> Having yeah. the sound board and the laptop is the only thing. Okay. Yeah. And just for full disclosure, I did say, nice pickup, Joe. I like the color. So I did eventually get to that point. But my first comment is, you gotta get it. you got to get a topper for this thing. So, anyway. We'll get there. Yep. It takes time, just like everything else. I don't know. What are, what are your expectations going into this weekend? I mean, are we confident? I, I mean, I, I I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty confident because there's there's life of turkey out here based off the video that Scott's in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel better coming in. After last year's spring turkey, I was almost debating, boy, should a guy even buy one for where we hunt and have access to? It's like, boy, you know, but. It's like when it came time again, it's like, yeah, let's get some tags. And then when we got some video of t- some turkeys that were on the property, well, that made you feel better. So I, I'm i hopeful that we'll see something. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, it's it's a kind of a large tract of land that we have access to. So you got to be in the right spot and uh, have a good setup and everything. But hopefully something will come in. I know the feeling, Dale. I'm kind of going through it right now with, with hunting uh, deer. On a scale of 1 to 10, what is your confidence level that you will shoot a bird this weekend? 10 being, I'm, I'm killing. Because because you've never, A, you've never shot a bird yet. Right. B, this is your second year. Last year we didn't see anything out here. Where Where is your confidence level? Well, I'm always at a 7 or 8, you know, uh, until you pull the trigger. Yeah, and then it goes down to a two. Yeah, (laughs) no. (laughs) Like, like, do do you 
do you firmly believe you're going to get the job done out here? If there's one in front of me, I firmly believe it, yes. Okay. I just, you know, like like with hunting, you know, there's times where I, I go out hunting and I'm like, am I even going to see a deer? Like, should I just be at home with my kids right now and my wife or whatever, or should I be in the stand right now? Um, and then there are times where I'm like, I know I'm going to see a deer, and I got a chance at seeing a pretty good deer too on top of that. Um, but uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic being that there were birds around here. Was it last week the video was sent? Right. I think it was last week. So that is a, that is a really good sign. Um, I've never seen, you know, I've been out here, I don't know, seven years now. This might be going on seven. And I've seen turkeys, but I've never seen a tom out here, like, in full strut and, you know, whether it be the fall or spring. So I don't know if there's just a lot of hens out here or I'm just not looking hard enough or what, but um, it, it'll be interesting. But I'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to see some birds one way or the other. Um, I know my buddy called up uh, his cousin and asked if they were seeing any birds, and they have been seeing some birds, so that might be – Plan B is if we don't see any birds here to hit that other property up and and see if uh, we can maybe get a bird over there or two. Um, and also, I know they got coyotes over there as well. So that's <laughs> if we come back with one bird for three, considering we didn't see any birds last year, I think that would be a triumph. You yeah, know, it would be. And so, and uh, it's a little different hunting out here. You don't have the woods like we do at home, so it's mm. uh, it's a little different, but it'll be. It's, it'll be a challenge, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, and then, I mean, as far as trip-wise, I mean, we're going to get things accomplished, too, you know. Yep. And that was one of our, our reasonings for coming out here, too, is that we can get set for this fall. You know, kind of killing two birds with, with one stone, if you will. Uh, two hope, coyotes with two. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe three. Maybe kill some coyotes. <laughs> maybe kill turkeys and also get stands set for for Excellent. this fall and – that's going to be the, the fun part, too, tomorrow is just strategizing. The other thing, too, is um, we'll have to go check out that mule deer spot tomorrow, too. Yes. And do a little walk through that. and Oh, sure. And kind of see what's... There was a couple of coyotes on that spot last year, too. Yeah, I kicked that one up. Remember that when I went out for that walk? Right. Uh, I kicked one up. It was right down the bottom. And you know what? Tomorrow, guys, if there's a northwest wind... Guess what we're going to be able to do again tomorrow? <laughs> Spot and stop. Yeah, right. Spot we can only go on practice, that. Practice. We can only go in that area when the temperature's over eighty. Yeah, right. Because the sun's on the back side, and they're going to be laying facing the north, and <laughs> they'll be right in the shade. So it'll be a pretty good uh, opportunity again. But yeah, I don't know. So yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, we'll kind of wrap things up here. But overall. Um, it's it's something turkey hunting i wish i would have started earlier what do, what do you think jerome i mean i i enjoy it a lot more now um being able to harvest a few birds would, would you have started turkey hunting early if you could have yeah but you got to remember too it used to be not like now you can get them over the counter yeah you used to have to apply and you didn't get a turkey tag every year you know it it was more competitive and it used to be only the only turkeys were in like in southern Minnesota. When I was, well, in my twenties and stuff, you had to. It was mainly for the really good hunting season. You went to southeast Minnesota for turkey hunting. Oh yeah. You know, in the late in the nineties, they started releasing birds, and then you started having more. But it was pretty limited to get a tag. And now, fortunately, they've flourished to the point where, you know, now you can buy it over the counter. You know, and. Usually at home, I look to see my work schedule and then what's the weather going to be like. And if the weather's going to be crappy, maybe I'll hold off a week. Um, but, you know, now it's it's really nice that you can buy it over the counter. Right. I think I check the stats here for our area that we're going in. There was actually like, I think it was maybe 10, 7 to 10 licenses that did not get approval for license or tags in this area. So where last year, I think everybody that, you know, applied got them. You know, through the third draw anyway, but yep. there were some people turned away. That kind of makes me encouraged that they're seeing more birds and they, you know, kind of put a cap on it a little bit more. Sure. Uh, it's it's amazing to me the amount of people out there that deer hunt that don't turkey hunt. Um, I get just a, as much of a thrill 
turkey hunting as I do deer hunting when it when it all comes down. I I know I've heard people say before that turkey hunting is like a miniature elk hunt with the calling back and forth and there's that that satisfaction of of calling in a turkey. You know, it feels like, you know, you did exactly what you were supposed to do. And then there's the frustration of kind of like what you were talking about with your story, Jerome, where you're sitting there calling and stuff and a bird hangs up and doesn't come in. Then it's like, well, yep. what did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, so now all of a sudden that fire burns a little bit like, okay, I need to do better next time. And what was it? Now all of a sudden the research starts. Now you're listening to podcasts. Should you call more? Should you call less? You're watching YouTube videos. I actually just shared a YouTube video. I don't know if you guys saw it on, on our Facebook page, but uh, I always loved watching Minnesota Bound with Ron Shera, and uh, he had a, a an episode on uh, turkeys and like when they were introduced. I shouldn't say introduced, but released. I released. What's they that? Reintroduced they, or released. Yeah. yeah, they released them. Yeah, yeah, down in Southeast Minnesota, and just such he does such a good job telling stories, and and uh, it was a sweet video. So if you go check out our Minnesota Rack Stars page, I shared that video, and it's a good one. It's worth checking out. Um, but yeah, turkey season's here, hunting season's here, 2024. It's it's game on. Um, I hope you guys get out there and try turkey hunting. If you've never tried it before, you're missing out. Um, but on the other hand, if you don't want to turkey hunt, that's fine with me. There's more uh, spots for me to go turkey hunting then. So uh, with that, I don't know, you got, you got anything to add before we shut her down? No, nope, we'll just have to give them an update on how we did coming back. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're going to stop here for some gas. And uh, I'm probably going to grab a little coffee because we got about, uh, what would you say, four hours left to drive? Four hours, four four and a half hours. Perfect, perfect. It's fun, guys. I'm excited to be doing this trip. Thanks for bringing me along again, and uh, let's have some fun. Sounds Sounds like a plan to me. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. You appreciate it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. We're excited to get back out to South Dakota. Anytime you can get out of state and go on a hunting trip with friends or family, uh, it's going to be a good time. Um, I know we're going to we're going to have a blast. We usually do out here. I hope you guys who are out there and gals uh, who are turkey hunting already uh, are having some success. And if you're not a turkey hunter, um, I highly encourage you to look into the sport because, um, in all honesty, kind of like uh, I mentioned in the podcast here, I wish I would have started earlier. I know uh, Uncle's Jerome and, and Dale they also wish they would have started a little earlier too. Um, if you're not into hunting, maybe just like listening to hunting, I highly encourage you just to go sit out in the woods and listen. Listen to all the animals that are out there right now because um, it's alive right now. You know, everything's moving its way back, um, you know, from the south and the woods are, are lighting up with sounds that we've been missing, you know, throughout the winter. So there's never been a, a better time to be out in the woods than, than right now and um, take advantage of it because uh, you get the turkeys gobbling the birds chirping uh you know the geese and the ducks and all that good stuff so take advantage of it right now because uh it's it's pretty special or even just go out and try to spot a turkey in full strut i mean it's it's so cool it's something to be seen so with that i uh, hope you guys are having luck and i just want to send off here with a special thanks to our partners from arctic shield domain outdoor jnr outdoors skullcraft tech cam and fourth arrow camera arms we appreciate you guys and everything you do for us um it's it's been a lot of fun working with you guys and uh there's a reason why we work with you guys because we trust your product and uh it uh holds true when we're out in the field and and uh it couldn't be more dependable everything you guys do for us we appreciate it and with that we'll catch you guys later and we'll see you next time